For this talk, I'm going to discuss the anatomy and function of the cruciate ligaments. Within the knee, we have what they call the anterior cruciate ligament and the posterior cruciate ligament. And basically, the name for them is a cruciform, and a cruciform means that it's a form of a cross. So the anterior and the posterior will cross over, and hence why it's known as the cruciate, which relates to the cross or the cruciform. They consider in the US over 100,000 athletes, patients, etc., will tear the anterior cruciate ligament. It's quite rare to do the posterior cruciate. You're looking at, say, out of 100 people, probably 97, 8 or 9 will be more ACL, and then maybe 1 or 2%, give or take, will be PCL. Now, in terms of their attachment and function, we can't really get to them, so we almost have to test the cruciate, not really directly, because we can't physically touch it like we can with the, the collateral ligaments on the sides, so we have to do specialized testing for. And I'll mention that as we go through. But if you're looking at, say, the one you can see here, so this is known as the anterior cruciate ligament. So this area, so this is the lateral femoral condyle, this is the medial femoral condyle, and then this is like the intercondylar notch along here, where the cruciate ligaments will naturally sit within. The anterior cruciate, I'll discuss this one a lot more, will come on to like the tibial plateau along here, and then it progresses to the medial side of the lateral femoral condyle. Okay, you can see it coming in down here. And if you were to look anatomically at that fiber, then we've got what we call an anterior medial fiber on here. And then behind that, you, can, you can't really see it, but just behind it, there's also known as a posterior lateral fiber. Okay, so the anterior cruciate ligament has two fibers. So it's got an anterior medial and a posterior lateral fiber. Within, it has what they call like a uh, meccano receptors. So it's on about the, the, the change of position. So you've got this neural supply to it because naturally it detects change. But it's one of the most common ligamentous injuries in the body. And in terms of the knee, we've got four main ligaments, ACL and PCL, the lateral collateral and the medial collateral. We reckon it's the main ligament to become torn. When it does tear, then the knee typically is in a rotatory type of movement, unless you've had contact, uh, where the knee is maybe being hit from the side and it could tear that way, but it's normally a rotational component within. So not all the time it's directly related to contact. You could just be pivoting on the foot and turn, and then that ligament can tear as a result of that forced rotation. And it typically will swell very quickly. And they call it a heme arthrosis, which is blood within the joint, and it normally swells within one to two hours. If you have what we call an aspiration, where they put a needle in and withdraw the fluid, they will look at it for a diagnostic. And naturally, if it's more red in appearance, they know there's a blood within, and more than likely, they would detect there is a cruciate ligament damage. If it's only like a synovial fluid, then it's more like a, like a plasma color, uh, color, like an egg white. So that's typically called a synovial effusion, which normally takes a day or two to swell, rather than an hour or two. The anterior cruciate, in terms of its function, because of where it attaches, it mainly prevents like anterior motion of the tibia going forward in relation to the femur that's going backwards. So they'll call it like an antero-posterior glide. Okay, so it prevents either the tibia from going anteriorly in respect to the femur, or the femur going posterior in respect to the tibia. So when we come to test it, we do what we call a, a draw test, an anterior draw test. So if I was to physically hold the tibia and pull it anteriorly, and it comes forward in respect to the opposite knee, okay, as it can glides forward here, it's hard to say exactly how much, but it's comparative to the opposite knee. 
So that's called a draw test, and if it's positive, it will come forward. We have something called the Lackman's Maneuver, and also another test called the Pivot Shift. So there are three main tests for the anterior cruciate ligament. Also, it prevents internal tibial rotation. So that's why when you, the foot is fixed and the femur and tibia is naturally in this unlock mechanism in here, okay? So when it's unlocking, then that ligament around 30 degrees and also 90 degrees, it can actually be taut, where it's trying to provide stability. So if you're in that sort of compromised position and then you increase the rotation, then the ACL, as it rotates, can actually tear. And then you can grade it a grid one, a grid two, and typically a grid three is a full thickness tear of the ACL. And typically, most of them, if you've torn, would need reconstructive surgery, where most of the time they would use the semitendinosis and then graft it and then drill through the tibial tunnel and the femoral tunnel and then feed it through. So that's a little bit about the ACL. The PCL on this one is actually torn. So on this model here, so you can see the, the posterior cruciate ligament is here. Okay, not quite anatomically correct. Okay, but naturally it's more posterior when it is anterior like the other one. And the PCL is mainly there to prevent the tibia from going posterior in respect to the femur or anterior of the femur in respect to the tibia. Okay. So, to tear the PCL is quite rare. We can do it with hyperextension injuries. So, where the knee is like extending, okay, or hyperextending. So, if you have, you know, if you land and then the knees are hyperextending back, there's a potential for it to tear. But more often than not, it's normally where you have contact on the tibia. So, if you fall and the tibia is forced posteriorly, like that motion, okay, where you hit here and it goes back, and then the posterior cruciate and rupture as a result of that. They reckon you can suffice quite well without the PCL, but if you tear an ACL, they consider that um, because of the excessive motion within the knee, hence the word like the pivot shift. So when you pivot on the knee, something shifts and it can just give way. And that's what a lot of patients and athletes will say, that the knee just seems to give way when they pivot on the leg. So that would probably indicate a, a cruciate deficiency. Whereas with PCL, you don't tend to get that natural instability. Um, so a lot of people could have a deficient PCL, but suffice okay. Whereas with an ACL, if it is deficient, it is recommended you would have surgery for. Otherwise, the chance of having degenerative changes like osteoarthritis within the knee um, would be a lot sooner um, if you are deficient within that, okay? So it's probably a good idea, but if you have torn it, but um, you would look at um, trying to get it repaired. So that's a little bit about the, the cruciate ligaments and their function. And naturally, if they swell, it does swell very quickly and it's called a, a hemarthrosis. I hope you've enjoyed the presentation and thank you for watching.